You're back for more of Avenue 5 here on Buzzchomp, and I'm reacting to the third episode of this wild and zany season. I'm Dan Salem, and it was all about the truth bomb, because OMG, truth bomb. I'm Mandy. I'm Dan. Subscribe to Buzzchomp. Buzz Woo! Nothing about this silly show makes sense, and that's why it's great, so set that aside. We got a ton of truth bombs dropped in this episode from a purely logic standpoint. I already talked about these things happening or having been the case multiple times throughout my original videos. They were fairly obvious to me, but the way that they were delivered, very funny. The way that the characters discovered these truths, even funnier. Main truth bomb of all, the entire crew of the ship on the bridge, fake. They're actors. I could just tell, it seemed fairly obvious. If you have an actor as a captain, then everyone on the bridge is probably acting as well. The captain discovered this this episode, and it was rather funny. It just shows how much of an idiot he is. If he's an actor, why would he assume that everyone around him is a real engineer and knows what they're doing? The fact that the ship got knocked off course and couldn't be corrected proves that it's on autopilot. Proves that it flies itself. Proves that you don't really need a crew. Therefore, why did he assume that those 20 people were real? They're all actors, hand models, models. Rather funny, one lady was a master at the light switch. It was great, great fun. That was a major truth bomb. I mean, I kind of knew it. We saw that our lead engineer, who was promoted from Joe's death, knows this all along. She kind of knows everything. She's obviously keeping lots and lots of secrets, but until she divulges a few more, we won't blow her up and like call her out on it. It would have behooved her to share that information earlier then we wouldn't have had this hilarious moment and hence it doesn't have to make sense. There was a little cubby underneath the bridge full of three engineers, like real engineers, working in a hole to actually man the ship. I mean, this is just stupid. It's like a la the monkeys in the basement on the typewriters typing the famous novel. They're not actually doing anything because the ship's on autopilot, but they're just maintaining the systems. We haven't actually seen her converse with them yet. This was the first that we have even known of their existence. Again, it's not logical, it's just funny. Nobody at the main site on Earth even mentioned the fact that there were a group of engineers that maybe you could talk to to figure out what to do. They didn't acknowledge their existence, probably because Judd has been around most of the time and no one could talk about them in front of him. He has to think that his actors are real people because everyone must appease Master Judd. So we have a fake crew on the bridge and a real group of weird looking engineers working in a hole. And of course, the trajectory that was predicted of six months is also not real. Knew that coming as well. It's actually three years plus six months. <laughs> the way that they explained it was, well, he only counted the 500 people, but the way he said it was that he only counted 4,500 and forgot to account for the extra 500 to get to 5,000, which gives him three years, six months. But the six months was the 500 people and the three years was the 4,500 people. So he just had all his numbers messed up from the very beginning. And of course he did. And why would it take any shorter? It was, a, it was a truth bomb, but the bomb itself was delivered by our new passenger liaison, which was rather amusing. She got a truth bomb dropped on her because she didn't know that her captain was an actor. And she didn't know that he was really British and not American. And she didn't know that the six months was actually three or six months. And then she was assigned to tell the rest of the passengers. But then she talked her way around it saying, oh, it's supposed to be five years. And I talked him down three or six months, which of course doesn't make any sense. And somebody tried to call her out on it and they just told him to shut up because <laughs> that's the way the show goes. Insanity, nonsensical nonsense, that's funny. Please be quiet. Don't acknowledge our ignorance, just laugh. Maybe a truth bomb for us viewers is the fact that those down on earth who are supposed to be guiding this self-guided ship really don't have a clue what the hell they're doing. One of the women was crying in her office with the door closed and then she had to brief the media, and then they were trying to answer questions, but she didn't answer any of them. She just basically pleaded the fifth. And they're having a vigil for the lost ship, except it's a cruise ship. And so no one's really dead yet, except for a couple people. So there's barely anybody there. And then Judd wants to hire actors to make the vigil stand out so that it can raise money to send 500 rescue ships to get them when they pass sort of close to Earth. This is just, it's just, oh, it's bogus BS. It's really, really out there because any sort of an orbit science, like why can't they just have the ship stop there and then they could just send the shuttles back and forth or redirect to Earth. It's just, it's stuck on its orbit. They can't change it. 
They can't stop the autopilot. They can't stop its momentum. So they're going to do anything and everything idiotic to try to save these people, whoever may be left by the time it gets around. It was uh, wonderful to see the passengers complaining about the food and complaining about their orders getting mixed up when in principle, they should be rationing so that at least they can survive a year. Heck, three or six months. They don't have enough food for a year in principle because this was a eight-week cruise, whatever. It doesn't really matter. So they really should be rationing water, food, supplies, everything. Yet people are complaining that they ordered steak and got chicken. I mean, give me a break. That's why this is so funny. It's the little idiosyncrasy humor. I'm slowly trying to learn these character names, but everyone's just yelling at each other and running around with their hair on fire. <laughs> it's hard to pick up on them. Matt is our imbecile in charge of customer liaison. He can't do a damn thing. Like Judd basically hired a bunch of people that say yes to him and can't accomplish a damn thing. It's a, it's a credit to those few men underneath the floorboards that this ship even took off in the first place. Someone's got to die. Our former astronaut has got to like make his presence known and maybe try to save them. Something else is going to go wrong. There's just like, they're stuck, right? And the fact that they're stuck hasn't progressed any. It's just slowly deteriorated to the knowledge that we already knew. I mean, I already assumed that they were all a fake crew. I already assumed they weren't getting home in six months. I already assumed that they would be running out of food rather quickly. These things seem logical to me. So the next thing to go wrong better be a surprise and a bomb of truth upon me. I'm Dan Salem. Subscribe to the Bus Shop YouTube channel for more great TV, sci-fi, and of course, Avenue 5. I'll be following the show all season long. It's really funny. I, I love science. I love science fiction. And it's clever and witty and stupid and idiotic. And all those things make for one fun TV show. Woo! Thanks for watching Buzz Chop. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. share.